and all the talk of fundamentals and how players today don't have the right fundamentals or don't develop their fundamentals or practice their fundamentals, uh, first, we rarely def define what we really mean by fundamentals, and I assume we mean it to be basically technical skills like shooting, dribbling, passing, uh, and individual defense. Um, but to me, there's something even more fundamental uh, than these technical skills, and that's basic athletic skills or basic movements. Um, to me, these are the initial or, or the foundation um, from which we play basketball. Uh, and I would wholeheartedly agree that these are not being developed um, to an appropriate or um, needed extent. Um, and so, you know, when I go into clinics uh, where I, you know, work with players who I don't work with on a daily basis, you know, players who can't skip, they can't lunge, they can't squat, um, you know, even up until high school players. Um, and this has a um, negative outcomes outside of just limiting their basketball potential. Um, because, you know, oftentimes in these types of clinics, you know, few, if any, of the players are destined for basketball greatness. Um, and so, uh, you know, the lessons and the learning of playing sports uh, goes beyond what they can accomplish through the sport, but it's probably more important what they can accomplish, um, you know, in terms of their health for an active living um, for the rest of their lives. Uh, and we know based on, you know, different studies and different research that children who have poorer motor skills um, tend to be less physically active. Um, they tend to quit sports earlier. So children with um, poorer motor skills will tend to be less active as adolescents. Those who are less active at adolescents tend to be less active as adults. Um, so in some ways it goes back to the early childhood experiences and what skills and motor patterns and movements are developed um, with young children has a lasting effect on not just their athletic success throughout their lives, but ultimately their health and well-being and physical activity in through adulthood. Uh, and so to me, before we worry about whether or not, you know, players practice their shooting enough or they have the right shooting fundamentals, you know, we need to focus on, you know, can they squat properly? Uh, can they lunge properly? Can they jump? Can they land? Can they skip? Can they run? These are the basic fundamentals and the foundational movements that we need to spend more time. Uh, and in previous generations, we could rely on physical education classes um, and free play for player or for children to learn many of these, um, you know, physical skills. You know, in a lot of ways, uh, these skills are are learned naturally. If you look at your average two-year-old, your average two-year-old can do a full squat. Um, it's only when they get to, you know, 10, 11 years old, you know, it's maybe earlier, eight, nine, 10 years old, that they lose this ability to squat and in some cases never regain that ability. Um, and so it's something that needs to be maintained, um, not necessarily even taught, but if we can keep those two-year-olds who can already do a squat fairly naturally uh, and then keep them, keep maintain that ability uh, to do the squat in throughout their, you know, childhood, they're going to end up, you know, a better athlete, you know, all things being equal than somebody who loses that squat pattern. Um, you know, players who, you know, when I was young, you know, children would hopscotch and they'd skip around, jump rope and stuff like that at recess. And a lot of those activities aren't as prevalent now, and so there is a lack of ability to hop and skip uh, and some of these other basic movement skills. Uh, and so in the absence of free play, rather than complaining, well, our players don't know how to do these, our players don't, uh, you know, they don't you know, play on the playgrounds anymore, they don't play as children, they're too sedentary and complain and complain and complain. Well, as coaches, we need to acknowledge that this is the truth. This is what is happening. These are the athletes that are presented to us at practice. We need to do something. Um, and to me, that's where I use a dynamic warm-up. I, I you know, start first 10 to 15 minutes of practice. Um, and starting from the beginning of the season, I'm going to try to teach these movements um, so that by the end of the year, if nothing else, uh, you know, they've developed some ability to squat, land correctly, hop, skip, um, and move better. And if they can move better, then they're probably going to be 
uh, better basketball players. Um, and if not, if they don't improve at basketball or if they don't like basketball, they'll have better movement skills that they can transfer to a different sport um, or simply to general physical activity um, to progress throughout their livelihood or their lives. Um, and so, uh, you know, with PE cuts and, you know, free play cuts and things like this, things that everybody agrees, um, you know, is occurring um, and, and shouldn't be occurring, but it is. And, and, and while we attempt to make inroads in, tor in terms of increasing the amount of physical education in elementary schools and increasing opportunities for children to play on their own in childhood, we as coaches need to take the time to uh, teach these skills that aren't developed and to make sure that you know athletes have these foundational skills so that we can develop better technical skills on top of the foundational skills as the players mature and spend more time engaged uh, in basketball or whatever sport it is that they play.